So this is my 2004 Toyota Sienna, front wheel drive. Uh, I put all wheel drive springs and struts and that raised up about an inch. Um, and then I added some all-terrain tires that are oversized. I uh, have 225 70 16s on it. Um, so it's got a little bit better ground clearance than your average Sienna. Um, outside on the rack, I put some uh, crossbars to mount my solar shower tubes. And this one is insulated. Um, I insulated it because inside of here, I installed a uh, 12 volt water heater. It's got 250 watt uh, elements in it. I can hook them up, hook both of them up, or just run one if I don't want to put a big drain on the battery. Um, generally, the idea is to hook it up and heat it while I'm driving, so I'm not using the batteries. Um, on the other side, I have an identical, well, close to identical, um, another solar shower tube. It's not insulated. They both handle about four gallons, carry about four gallons. Um, they have ball valves instead of regular faucets because they're just a quick quarter turn to open and close. Um, I've also installed Ketter rails on both sides of the van, right up against the gutter rail. Um, for those, that allows me to put a uh, window screen. It's an umbrella uh, netting, mosquito netting, that goes all the way up to the back of the front door. Um, on both sides and covers the back so it'll hang off over this uh, back hatch and give me a little bit of space there for your mosquitoes. Um, so there's the other Ketter rail on, on this side. I used two, two, two four-footers, glued them together in the middle, um, and I did that to allow me to put awnings on both sides as well um, so that I can open up the windows in the rain and be able to have cross ventilation. I built window screens um, on the windows. I'll show you that a little bit later, but there's window screens on both both sliding door windows. Uh, I'll start off with the battery box up front that is uh, between the two front seats, as you can see. Um, these are two Battleborn 100 amp uh, golf cart style batteries. So the width of them actually fit between the seats as opposed to a regular standard size battery. Um, inside here is a B2B 30 amp uh, Victron uh, inverter, whatever it is, the battery charger from the alternator. Um, I also have a direct connection to the alternator from the battery, so if I flip the switch, I can jump start the car from my house batteries. Uh, the B2B runs pretty hot in my experience, and so I've also installed down here, um, if you can see it, a computer fan, four inch computer fan, and that's on a, that's got um, a four inch hole drilled in the backside of the heat sink of the uh, B2B. And I turn that on with a switch, power switch here, I turn that on and off. Um, also, I have the battery monitor that is a part of the battery box so I can see what's going on when I'm driving. I can see my my battery monitor. Um, I also have a main shutoff switch for the uh, electrical in the in the van and also another is a two position shutoff so the other position is to turn on and off the inverter um, and that's right here at the top of the kitchen. Um, have USB as well. I also changed out one of the uh, cigarette lighters and put in a dual USB uh, charger on the car. Uh, coming back here, we have uh, the kitchen. This is a full width, car width countertop. Um, underneath this section is a Dometic uh, 40 quart refrigerator. It runs on 12 volt or 120. Um, that's pretty good sized. It's not the greatest as far as temperature modulation. I keep stuff that's okay to be warm in this little pouch here, like eggs and uh, vegetables, things I don't want to freeze. And down here, it gets colder in the other section. And inside, I have that uh, Bluetooth thermometer that I generally position um, 
in the fridge there so I can monitor what the temperature is inside the fridge. The next section of the countertop is a lift up where I have all of my utensils, knives, forks, spoons, thermometers, all the kitchen utensils, knives, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, in that section. In the last section, this is where the stove sits and lives. Um, this is a two burner Primus. Um, I have a spice rack that slips out of the back of that. Um, and I have an additional countertop with this little strut of wood. Lift this out. And now I've got additional counter space there. Uh, inside in the cab, I have on the roof, I have a set of fans. They're high velocity. Uh, computer fans. All the fans in the van are computer fans because they're quiet, they're cheap, and they don't take a lot of power. Um, these swing down so that when it's hot, I can just turn these babies on, crank them up. Makes a lot of noise, but it really moves the air. Um, that's nice. I use a, a motor, uh, some kind of motor controller thing instead of a dimmer switch. I use a dimmer switch in that to control these fans. And it made a high-pitched squeal, so I talked to cooler guys, and they said, oh, you got to do a different kind of um, switch. And then these have magnets that hold them in place. Um, this also is open to the outside air if I want. I have a, I have a um, bubble wrap insulator there to keep the sunlight from shining through the holes that I drill there. So I can also run the fans and evacuate the air up through the van. Um, it doesn't seem to be all that effective. But it's an option. Um, I also have fans over the kitchen. There's a fan that can be swung and turned on. Um, and these, these fans, I love these fans. They're a three-speed fan. Um, unfortunately, they've been discontinued. Uh, I wish I'd bought more. So I can run it down at a really low speed, and it's quiet at night, but still circulates air. Um, up here, I also have... Uh, a light on a gooseneck so that when I'm cooking at night I can put that out and I can shine the light on the stove when I'm cooking. Um, the kitchen has three LED puck lights. You can see those are all flush mount into the kitchen. Um, and on the other side, in order to have cross ventilation, I have another fan that comes down. And these fans, I can, I can unhook it on these hooks and turn them around depending on which direction I want the air to flow. Um, this one is flowing into the van. I can turn, I can take it off and spin it around and blow air out the van. Uh, the curtains are blackout curtains. These were from Costco blackout curtains. Um, they are double thickness because a single layer wasn't enough to completely block out the light. I used uh, tent poles and I went into a wooden block here and because of the, the fitting on the end of the tent pole, I was able to drill a smaller hole than the tent pole, but big enough to allow the coupling to, to go through. So this is wedged in place and held with uh, a little loop there on top of this little thing I had to put on there. Um, so the ceiling uh, is half inch ply. Um, and these side panels open up to access the electrical. Um, this is, uh, is an add-on for the power for the, for the fans. So that plugs in there. So if I wanted to, I could plug other accessories in on that kind of plug. Uh, over on this side, uh, it doesn't look very light. Let's see if I can get some more light in here. There we go. Some more light, and you can see I have uh, storage pouches along this, this side of the cabinet, the front of the cabinets. Um, all kinds of little, little kinds of things I can store in here. Um, so that's what I use that space for. Underneath the kitchen is my utilities. Uh, I have a, a Blue Sea uh, fuse box, and that pretty much runs the power pretty much everywhere in the van. Um, it all comes through this fuse block, which comes right straight from the, the power box. Um, there's also a grounding, grounding bar there. Uh, the plug is, is for the refrigerator, um, and I also have a MPPT uh, solar charge controller and that 
has a connector so that I can plug in um, my solar panels. I have a 110 watt flexible solar panel. Oh, I also have um, a 20 foot length of cable, 10, 10 gauge cable to plug into the solar panel so I can um, put the solar panel in the sun while I'm parked in the shade. Um, in this utility space, I have duct tape. Uh, this is my box of all kinds of accessory type repair parts, extra pump for the, for the Chinese diesel heater, um, all kinds of like clothes clamps, all kinds of little bits and pieces. Um, underneath the kitchen, I ended up installing a water pump. Um, and this is for the shower. It originally was for a sink that I had installed, but I took out the sink. And so now this will suck water from a bucket or any, well, basically a bucket because the hose isn't long enough to run to a stream. But anyway, um, I can suck water from the bucket and spray it into the shower. Um, and that I can show you on the other side when I move the kitchen in. Um, and behind the front passenger seat is the Chinese diesel heater. These things are amazing. Um, and this is vented to underneath the kitchen. Um, it comes out on the other side. There's a, there's a duct that comes there, but with the kitchen out, obviously it doesn't run. So there's a, a notch that I cut for that to come out. Um, to move around, let's see, let's keep going. Okay, cabinet up above, I have toilet paper and uh, body wipe washes, uh, small claws that I use for when I take a shower. Uh, next cabinet down, I have blankets. Uh, I have multiple blankets in there. And then the next cabinet down is for clothing. Uh, inside this cabinet, there is a USB uh, double outlet on this side, which then turns on. And you can see that's got two plugs in there. And then that uh, the USB, I actually have a plug for the phone, and it's wired so that the, if the wire comes out of this for the one side. Um, and let's see. So that's this cabinet. I used, I used a lot of these uh, type of hinges because they lock. You can open a cabinet and lock it in place. Um, so that holds the cabinet so you can't, you can't wiggle it. It holds it tight. But then I found I had an a issue with putting stuff in the cabinet, so I had to build these little spacers so that it, uh, it would not get impinged with the things that are in the cabinet. Um, that's this side. There's also this small hole. Um, I had a light, puck light up here. I ended up putting in another one of these lights, the gooseneck lights, the three, three light positions. Um, they're really nice for moving around and putting light where you want it. Um, and there's my another one of my Bluetooth thermometers. I hang that outside so I know how cold it is outside on the ceiling. You see I've got another another light that works off the dash so I can from the dash I can turn on a light that single light that lights up the this area and I have a second one uh, back here with a with a flip switch on it. I'd hope to do a dimmer switch but turns out there wasn't enough room after insulation. Um, on this side I have um, as you can see, multiple cabinets on this side. The small cabinet is for medical supplies. Um, you know, sunscreen, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and in this other cabinet next to it, this flips up, locks in place, and that's out of your way. Um, on this side, there's a pair of fans in this window. Let's see if I can show you how this is. Okay, so this has a pair of fans there, and these again are the three-speed fans. Um, when it's at night and it's kind of warm, I can turn this on low. I don't really hear it because it's quiet. It's running now. Um, and so I can run that at night, and I can, I can point this towards my head where I'm sleeping or I can point it towards the front of the van if I want to move air that in that direction. There's also a light on a dimmer in here. Um, and this window is one of the side vent windows. This has window screen on it. Uh, with all the wood cabinetry, I was able to, to build in a window screen. Um, 
And that's there's that storage. And then here's the thermostat for the Chinese diesel heater that's uh, sitting right there. Uh, up above is a carbon monoxide detector, some hot extra hot mitts for decoration, paper towels. Um, so that's that cabinet. And, and below, I have where I keep my clothes. Um, I love these uh, packing cubes. It takes quite a few packing cubes in here, and I kind of tried to design the cabinet to be deep enough to take a cap packing cube just about the right width. It would have been nice if I had another half inch, but would have made the bed smaller, so I didn't want to do that. Um, and I keep other stuff down here as well. Um, as far as storage, let me bring the kitchen back into the van, and you can see what all is involved in that. And slides back in. Hopefully it won't slide back out. Uh, slope there. So in the go. Um, so let's look okay, that's in place. Stay there. I'll close the door so it doesn't get out of control. Okay. Okay. So in the kitchen there are multiple drawers. Got a frying pan, a toaster, a spatula, that kind of thing. Um, next drawer down, I have some bigger pots. I need a pair of pots here, and little little pots and measuring cups and that, and the like. Uh, down in the bottom drawer, I have plates and another bigger pot. And inside of there, there's smaller pot and and bowls for for eating out of. Um, that's usually what you do with bowls, right? Um, and then down here is the, the espresso maker. Got to have one of those, right? Um, I don't drink coffee, but my wife does. Um, so then there's mugs. There's multiple mugs. And there's a glass, very nice glass, drinking glass in here. I keep that in a, in a plastic yogurt container so it doesn't get broken while I'm driving. Um, underneath the, the stove, there is a kitchen, there is the, the fuel tank, propane tank, and that is a half size squat propane tank, probably bigger than I needed, but I just drove for three months, didn't have to refill it. Um, not that I cook that much, but it's really nice not to have to worry about, you know, having to get propane all the time. Um, and this is also food storage. On the other side... I have um, some more kitchen stuff so that when I'm when I'm cooking, I'm standing just outside the door, and I've got you know seasonings, I've got salt and pepper, chili oil, cooking oil, tamari, that kind of stuff. Um, and then in this little cubby hole, hard to see, but in there, there's a female urinal, and there's backup urinal for me. I've got another another one that I use most of the time. I use that one, but you know, sometimes if you get gotta go, gotta go, got some extra storage space for either one of us if we need it. Um, and then behind here is a glass jar, the, a glass lock jar. Let me see if I can get some light in there. Um, so there's a glass lock jar, and that is a lifesaver because when I poop in my massive toilet, and isn't that a big toilet? Amazing, huh? Anyway, so. I've used, this fits dog poop bags perfectly. Um, this is not a dog poop bag, but it's another bag. Um, but anyway, so dog poop bag, poop into this, and then that comes out, gets tied up shut, and then it gets put into that glass jar, and then that contains the smell. Because I'll tell you, it's pretty darn gross to have to smell a poop bag, especially for a few days at a time. Um, let's see, one last space, storage space I've got down here. Um, and some more storage space. I have one of these amazing little USB faucets. Um, I don't use it much, um, mainly because the, the shower tube that I have outside the door um, over the kitchen, um, I have that there so that I have running water basically to wash my hands, rinse, rinse pots and pans, rinse dishes um, right over the kitchen. 
So th that's why that one has the outlet right over the kitchen. Um, let's see if I can go to the back of the van. Let's see. Okay, let's do this. Set this up here. Back of the van. Kitchen's going to want to open because it's on a downhill slope. Okay. Um, so the bed uh, is a reversible couch. It can be a couch mode looking out the back. Um, there's two positions. There's pretty vertical or there's a little bit less vertical. Um, so that's in couch mode. And then down below, I have two drawers that is my pantry. And I can tell you there's way more food than I can eat in a couple of weeks here. Um, but I have a, okay, so down here is a 12 volt rice cooker. I love it. Set it and go. Um, there's another glass, uh, drinking glass protector there. Uh, storage containers, spices, all kinds of stuff. Um, and this storage compartment on this side goes full length of the van, front to back. Um, I made that originally for skis so that I can store cross-country skis. It's over six foot long in that space. In fact, it must be close to eight feet. Um, and so that's, that's the feature of why the kitchen actually is raised up and has this pantry space underneath it. Um, the bed, I think I was going to tell you about the bed. Um, so the bed flips out. It just, this comes out and drops down. It has supports against the kitchen. Uh, that holds that flat. Um, and what else have we got? Let me show you around back. So the back, um, there is another couch which this goes forward. It's a three, se three section bed. So this goes forward. Um, and then that makes, that makes a couch facing forward. So I can have a couch facing back out the back door with the back door open, or if it's cold or night and cold, um, you can close, close the car up and have the, the couch facing forward. Um, I have multiple storage spaces back here. Um, so a little trick I did on these, on these little latches, they tend to rattle and move. So I put a couple of super magnets right there and that holds that so it doesn't move. Um, on the left side, we have the gas tank for the diesel heater. Um, and this is put on a hinge. And so in order to fill this, I just slant this out and that gives me access to put a gas, gas pump into there or my gas tank or whatever. Um, I vented the air vent goes outside goes down and outside the van so that any gases from expansion and contraction um, the air goes outside the van instead of being inside my last two cheap garbage Chinese diesel heater tanks leaked um, as far as smell um, they also leaked a little bit out of the, around the cap because you couldn't get the cap tight um, also behind here there is backpack stove emergency backpack stove with a can of fuel uh, a little whisper light MSR and then I have a shower tube. This is a 20 foot long uh, clear tube that will gravity feed off my showers. Um, so I can take a shower like 20 feet away from the car. Um, and I just hook those up, hook that up to the hose, to the hose bib there. Um, that's the storage in this cabinet. Oh, there's also a, a, a griddle. I have a, iron, a cast iron griddle that goes on the, on the stove. It covers the, the stove perfectly. Uh, don't use it much, so that's why it's down there. Um, got a couple of camp chairs, and then I've got these Reflectix uh, window covers. These go on the back back sliding windows when it's really cold. I rarely use them these days. Um, Chinese diesel heater kind of eliminates the need for for that. Um, I have a shower tent, so if I want to take a shower, I can set up a shower tent. It'd be free from the wind. Um, also down here, so these are these are a pair of tent poles that are for my awning. I have the awnings on both sides. Uh, a camp table, and there's the poles for the for the awning um, that that match the. These are adjustable poles, so I can set the height to whatever I want. And the other ones are set set height, so I can either have 
one side slope one way or slope at the other. Um, also down here, I've got my tools, a couple of tool bags, spare, spare propane tank, uh, a refillable propane tank, uh, some clothes, and then I've got multiple pieces of wood for setting the height when I'm trying to park. Sometimes I just need a little little boost. Sometimes I need a big boost. Um, but those are those are both here. Um, extra clothes, and I also have an oven which I have yet to put to put to work. Uh, and I have a couple of uh, hammocks, backpacking water filter, um, and these are tire pumps. These are little tiny air tire pumps. Um, they're great. They, uh, I've hooked that up to my shower and I can, I can pressurize my shower. And instead of gravity feed, I can, I can run a shower with some decent pressure. Um, on the other side, this cabinet, this cabinet door, I have a, uh, it's not in here right now. I have a five gallon scepter, uh, water tank. These are, these are both two and a half gallon tanks. Um, so they have a five gallon tank that'll go here. And then I just mount on this little bungee and this this screw i put that that usb faucet that i showed you earlier i put that on here and then i take the, the feed tube and i put that into the i don't have to take the tank out i just unscrew the the cap and i can run the tube into the tank and pump out of that tank um, i also have water filters i have for when i'm picking up some water from a from a faucet somewhere, this has uh, hose th hose bib threads, and that runs into a, another piece of hose that can run into my into my water tanks. Um, I also have a countertop water filter, which has a hose bib fitting on it as well. So I, if I really want to filter the water, um, I'll pull that thing out. But generally, I just use this this thing. Um, so that is the water storage. Uh, I think that's got pretty much everything. Um, the back window is insulated with uh, Reflectix and some 5 8 inch rigid, rigid foam. Um, this pops out so I can see out the back when I want to do that. Uh, the window curtains, uh, these just slide on tent poles again. And when you take all the plastic junk off the car, you find there's nice little holes and things for, for things to fit in. And it was good spacing for the, for the curtain rods to hold these in place. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Got lights on the back door. Uh, I have a pair on dimmers and another set on switch. Um, I think that's it. Okay.